before we actually get into the video, I want to talk to you guys about the OneFootball app. And actually, I'll put it on screen for you here, because for me, it's the best football app there is on the planet. It's great for team news, transfer news, player statistics, and a whole lot more. And also, on top of that now, if you are a resident in the UK or in Ireland, you get match highlights for La Liga, Liga Portugal, and the DFB Pokal. And also on top of that, you now get full coverage of the Indian Super League, which means you get match coverage and match highlights every single week. And then finally, on top of that, full Serie A coverage, including once a week, you get a game which you can watch literally for free. Absolutely zero cost, nil, nothing, if you use the one football app. And this week is Fiorentina at home to Inter, which I'm really looking forward to watching. And if you guys want to check it out, you can using the link in the description down below. Make sure to check it out and download the One Football app today. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where we are back with a tactical preview. And this time is Manchester United versus Tottenham Hotspur, who are of course playing each other tonight at Old Trafford. And with this being quite a big week for Manchester United in terms of the fixtures that they've got, I thought it was important to talk about how United can get three points here, because I do think that would be a really important three points for their season. One, just in the sense of needing the points in the league table, but also who you are beating, the fact that it would be at Old Trafford, things like that. And Spurs have started the season reasonably well, they've started okay, but I think there are certainly weaknesses in the way that they defend. And I thought that we really saw that in their recent game against Arsenal. I thought Arsenal really set out the blueprint of how you can beat this team. So I want to try and talk about today how United and how Ten Hag and the players can do something similar to what Arsenal done and how Manchester United can beat Spurs to get all three points in this game. So when we talk about Spurs under Conte, one of the first things that comes to mind is that they are quite pragmatic. It's always safety first, and they like to be quite nice and secure defensively. And as a result, they aren't going to press crazily high up the pitch. Harry Kane isn't going to be chasing David De Gea. Instead, Spurs will sit back in their mid-block shape like this, and at times the wing-backs will even drop all the way almost into a full-back position. So at times it will be a back five rather than a back three. And then as a result, the two wingers will come back and defend in a flat four in the middle. Now, in terms of the actual Spurs lineup, I'm not exactly sure what it will be. They've got a few players missing. But this is just kind of the lineup I came up with based on some recent games. Plus players who are out injured, but similar players coming in. But anyway, with them sitting deep like this, I think United should find it reasonably easy to progress the ball through the first, uh, first phase of play. And then it's all about how they build possession from here. This is one of the most important things. Now, a lot of times recently, I've suggested that United should perhaps build in more of a back three like this, with then one of the fullbacks moving inside to play alongside Casemiro or McTominay, whoever it may be, into this 3-2 shape. However, because of the fact that Spurs will be quite standoffish at times, Kane will be the only one in the middle, which means United don't need three centre-backs to play through that. Two is plenty. So instead, they can use their usual 2-3 shape to build possession. If United use this shape, then they should be able to take control of the game, because Harry Kane simply can't press Lissandra Martinez, Casemiro and Varane at the same time. And even if he could, he probably won't want to, because that's not how Conte will ask the team to play. So from there, I think the balance of the rest of the United team is extremely important. One thing that is crucial is that they stretch the pitch. They have to make the pitch as big as possible. Spurs will be reasonably defensive for certain periods of the game, so in order to break that down, you have to make the pitch massive. That's what United really need to do. So I would be asking Rashford and Anthony to really hold the width. It could be Jadon Sancho coming and do a similar job. Whoever it is, they need to play nice and wide. And then from here, the balance of Eriksen if he is fit, and Bruno Fernandes is very important. It's something I have mentioned a few times already this season. Bruno Fernandes constantly drifts to his left-hand side. Eriksen does it as well. Ronaldo does it as well. United are too left-side heavy. They cannot afford to do that in this game, especially up against the back five. United need to have the balance so they can pin that back five back. Because if you leave a free centre-back in this Spurs back three or back five, it allows them to be aggressive and come and step out, which you don't want Romero in particular doing. So United need to play with their balance and they need to try and pin that defence. So Bruno Fernandes needs to make sure that he is playing in this right side pocket in this game, more so than normal. I think, like I said, I've spoken about it a few times, I think this is something that needs to happen in general with United, but particularly in this game, United need that balance across the attack. So Bruno Fernandes needs some real positional discipline in this game. He needs to be playing this role and allow Christian Eriksen to push a little bit higher on the left, because we saw Fred doing it at the weekend against Newcastle, and whilst Fred weren't great, in general, the United attack did benefit from having this left-sided midfielder just a little bit higher up the pitch. So this is the build-up shape that I would be looking to use if I was Manchester United. 
Now let's talk about why. So I think the first reason for using this shape is pretty clear, it's pretty self-explanatory and you've probably already noticed it. It is the fact that it would allow United to have so many players in central areas. Apologies if I just hit the mic. With Spurs often playing almost a 5-4-1 when they defend, it means that they only have two midfielders, likely to be Hoiberg and Bentancur. Now yes, they are both very hard working, but there realistically is only a certain amount they can do when you've got Luke Shaw, Casemiro, Dallo, Fernandes and Eriksson all around them. So that is the first problem that you create for Spurs. You play in this way, you give them 5 versus 2. Good luck dealing with that. They won't be able to. As a result, Conte is intelligent, he won't let that happen. He will not let this Spurs 2 just play completely alone in the midfield. And again, this is something that we saw in that Arsenal game. And what he will do is he will bring his wingers really narrow. To almost join in as central midfielders, they are still wide players, but they defend in a really, really narrow 4. So we now see Spurs in this 5-4-1 with a lot of narrowness. Is narrowness a word? I'm not sure, but I'm using it. Narrowness. Anyway, so Spurs will look to play in the shape as 5-4-1, and from here, this is where United can now progress, because of course, if Spurs are really crowding the centre of the pitch, it gives United quite an easy option. Play the ball wide. It's quite simple, right? If a team is defending really narrow, just stretch the pitch. I talk about it all the time, United really need to do it in this game. Whether it's Lissandra Martinez or Luke Shaw passing to Rashford, or Rafa Varane or Dallo passing to Anthony, that pass needs to happen, and then these wingers have to be brave. And that is why I would go for Rashford over Jadon Sancho, just because I think Rashford is a bit more aggressive with the way that he plays on the ball, and he's more likely to get at his man. Now, again, that is something that we saw in the Arsenal game. Martinelli, in particular, down on his left-hand side, was brilliant. And he just kept going, kept going. Yes, sometimes he loses the ball, and it can be a bit frustrating. Just keep getting at him. Keep getting at him, because down this side of the pitch... Whoever is on the right wing, they don't tend to be as hard working as what Son is on the other side. So it does give United potential to get this one versus one situation with Rashford up against Doherty. And we can see Christian Eriksen in this area, the importance of that balanced front five, kind of stopping Romero from doubling up on Rashford. So that is important. Down the right hand side, things will be a little bit different. And this is why it's important that Anthony has more support than what he's had in recent games. Because Hyung Min Son is very hard working. He hasn't necessarily had the greatest start to a season but he is going to track back and help his man. And often, he will make it a 2v1, especially when Spurs are really deep like this, like really pinned into their own defensive area, and Anthony is picking up the ball. Hyung Min Son will track back to make this a 2 versus one situation. Bruno Fernandes will be higher. This is where Dallow is important. Ben White played this role for Arsenal in the London derby, and was really good at it. He is always, essentially, the free pass. Now, it's not necessarily a free pass where you're suddenly going to create loads, but having a free pass is always important, because if Son is going to come across here to deal with Anthony, it means the rest of the midfield has to shift across, and then you can start to move the team about. I think I just hit the mic again, having a bit of a mare here. But what we can see is if Anthony is now 2v1, it's going to be difficult for him to progress there, but rather than just swinging a hopeless cross into the box, I think it's now important that he shows a little bit of patience, cycles the ball back to Dallow, who can then go to Casemiro, to Shaw, to Rashford, shuffle the ball from side to side. United need to do that. Now, this is going to require patience because Spurs are a difficult team to play through. It's going to take patience from the fans as well because this won't be an easy task to break the Spurs team down. There are times when United will have to kind of probe side to side and then look for those passes in between the lines. They're not going to come easily. However, I certainly think there are ways you can do it. Another way that you can do it is by, again, exposing the fact that the Spurs wingers will be so narrow from a defensive point of view. So what you can kind of do is draw them out a little bit particularly down this left, like, attacking left side as well. You can kind of draw the Spurs right winger into pressing short. This is something that we've seen in a few games this season. When Spurs have played against narrow fullbacks, the defensive narrow wingers kind of get drawn out a little bit. And this is where your left-sided central midfielder, Christian Eriksen, in this situation, can drop to the left-hand side here. And again, now we can see the potential to get forward. We can see this massive open space that has now opened up. And United now have the potential to attack and drive into this area. That is the most important thing when you play against a reasonably defensive-minded side like Spurs. It's all about pulling players out of position, pinning certain players into their own defensive areas like this back five here, and then pulling out other players. Very, very important. Because also what it does, it then just opens up someone like Casemiro a bit more if you can draw players out. It just makes life a whole lot easier. United have to be really patient on the ball. 
but I think Bruno Fernandes dropping wide outside of Son and Eriksen dropping out wide to the side of Mora or whoever this player may be will be really important for United. Of course, not at the same time. If one, if we are building down the left, Eriksen does it and Bruno Fernandes can be more central. And then if you're doing it down the right, Bruno Fernandes pulls wide and Eriksen comes into that more central area. I think the other thing that's probably important to mention is that this is one of those games where crosses probably aren't going to be that useful. Now, I am someone that will always encourage crossing the ball into the box because it causes confusion, hesitation for defenders. But I think playing against a back three, which are quite aerially dominant, I don't think it's going to be worth it when United only have one striker in the box. So instead, United will need to show more patience, but also more sharpness on the board than what they have done recently. And that comes more down to the players. So what we've spoken about uh, so far in the video is how Ten Hag can tactically set the players up to get them into these situations. If Ten Hag uses these tactics that I've been talking about, United will get into pockets of space because the spur shape has these flaws in it. It's then about the sharpness of the Manchester United players. The passes have to be much crisper than what they have been so far this season, pretty much. United are going to have to be on it to open up what is a very disciplined defence. Spurs are not an easy team to play through. This is by no means an easy game for Manchester United. Spurs will come into this game very confident that they can win. United are going to have to show quality, sharpness and intelligence on the ball and turn opportunities into chances. We've seen it a lot recently, United are getting into good, decent areas, but then they're not playing the final pass, or they're playing the wrong way, or a poor touch, or some good defending even at times. United have to be better with their decision making on the ball, but I do think if they use this 2-3-5 shape, it is the way forward. Because there's two options, they're either going to outnumber Spurs in the middle of the pitch, if Spurs defend with their wingers wide, which is recipe for disaster from Spurs' point of view, or United will be able to outnumber them out wide, if Spurs bring their wingers inside. And any time you can outnumber players, get numerical overloads, that is always a very good sign, especially when you've got high quality players like Manchester United have. Quick one-twos, things like that is the key to breaking the Spurs team down. We know that they like to defend. Ten Hag really needs to drill into these players that quick football is the way to break them down. Quick, clean, sharp passing. Like I said, if United do these things and stretch Spurs in these ways, then I genuinely think that United have a very good chance of winning this game. And I think it would be a bit of a statement win against a difficult team. Whether or not it will happen, we'll have to wait and see. But I think United do have potential. They have to build in this shape, though. This 2-3-5. Bruno Fernandes needs to be drifting through this right pocket. Eriksen, or whoever the left-sided midfielder is, needs to be given the license to get forward. And the wingers really have to hold the width and be brave on the ball. United have to take risks. Get at their men. Yes, have times where you're patient and cycling possession, but when you get it in these wide areas, one versus one up against a wingback, they have to be brave. Because that's when you cause problems. If Rashford can get past Doherty, Romero then has to react. Which then means Dyer has to react, which means Davies has to react. Then you start dragging players out of position. These wingers have to be really brave on the ball, and I actually think they hold the key. I think Ten Hag can set up a very nice 2-3-5 shape if Bruno Fernandes drops to the right side. I think United can have the balance and the right setup. It's about bravery and decisions on the ball from the players. So yes, Ten Hag tactically needs to get it right. This is the way I would approach the game. But a lot of this is going to come down to how the Manchester United players play on the night. That's not really something we can talk about or predict. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. That's how I think United can really get at and control and dominate this Spurs team. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think United will win? If so, is this the way you would approach it? Is there anything I've missed? Any players that you think should be starting this game? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.